Hello everyone, welcome to installing and testing the Space Shuttle for Realism Overhaul in Kerbal Space Program 1.12.5. Uh, this is for the latest version of Realism Overhaul and we are going to be using the latest version of the Space Audi Space Shuttle System Expanded. It on its GitHub page, which I will link in the video description, it says really suggest to use this instead, which is a different version. Uh, but the reason I am not using this other version uh, is because this other version's dependencies includes a personal fork of Ferrum Aerospace Research. Uh, and this is a custom aerodynamic model that, uh, well, it's a little bit complicated. And because of that, uh, it does have a functional split rudder air brake, which is nice. Uh, so but there's a lot of work that was done here that is valuable. But if I want the install to do other things and be consistent with other people's results, with the regular Ferrum Aerospace Research because they're not doing special shuttle things. Uh, I need to use the regular Ferrum Aerospace Research, not a personal fork of it. Uh, so yeah, I, I will just use a Space Audi one, even though that one is very tempting. And its requirements are a set and uh, this for the cockpit, uh, the props in the cockpit, and then a JSI raster prop monitor also for the cockpit. J uh, KSP wheel for the wheels, uh, B9 part switch for the texture switching, which will become important, and Ferrum Aerospace Research, the regular type. And that's what I'm going to be testing it with. So I actually copied the RP1 install for my European Space Agency career. So we actually also have RP1 in there. What we don't have is Kerbalism. Kerbalism will interfere with the fuel cell and the APU system. So if you have Kerbalism, your fuel cells might not be working as intended as far as this mod intended, so keep that in mind. Uh, but yes, so the release is the version that was released on September 20th, 2022, and that's what we'll be working with. Now, during testing, I discovered that it wasn't able to hold a 40 degree pitch as intended, and that was possibly because the realism overhaul configurations for the space shuttle and these are in realism overhauls ro suggested mods slash space shuttle system and the file is fuselage.cfg well originally it had the com of the crew cabin moved up front uh, forward by 0.6 meters and also the com of the cargo bay moved forward by 3.3 meters and the net result of this is that it was too nose heavy and so having figured that out, I moved the COM back to where it was, so it's now 0, 0, 0 for both, and that works better. It can hold a 40 degree pitch, but it uses a lot of RCS. So I'm thinking that the next thing I'll do, and I haven't done it yet, it won't be in the video that I show you, uh, is probably cancel out the COL offset. Now this is for the cargo bay, not for the wings, uh, but this is moving the center of lift further back which also would tend to make it more nose heavy. So if we move that back to 0, 0, 0, that might help as well. And then uh, because the cargo bay doesn't have actually that much lift, it should be all right, maybe. So I do recommend that to do these changes to the RO config for the shuttle if uh, you intend to use the Space Audi shuttle. It is possible that these uh, changes were originally meant for an older version and clearly there's been developments since. So keep that in mind. Now, if you have an older version of the Space Audi Shuttle, you might end up with a spike on the nose. That's for Enterprise, and it's not supposed to be there for Atlantis, Discovery, Endeavor, etc. And that's because there's a conflict between the texture replacer file that switches between the textures for the different shuttles. And there's one in the Space Audi folder and one in Realism Overhaul. And the newest version of the Space Audi shuttle ensures that its one takes precedence, but if you still have the problem, maybe you should try to delete the one in the Realism Overhaul folder. So that's in the Suggested Mods Space Shuttle system. Anyway, building the shuttle, you have the cockpit, you have the cargo bay, you have the engine mount, and you have the two wings. Each of the wings should have elevons, so the elevons are a separate part. Uh, and the wings also have the texture replacer on it so that you can pick the variant that is most appropriate for the shuttle that you're using. Check that your OMS pods have the helium in, so it should be MMH Mon 3 and helium. 
For the vertical stabilizer, this is still the old version that had a texture replacer problem. Uh, so it had the node in the wrong place. I that's probably been fixed, but if it's not, you can still surface mount the vertical stabilizer and it'll be fine. And so I surface mount it. But if you have the old version of the Space Audi shuttle that uh, has this texture replacer conflict, you won't be able to take the silts pod off of the top of the vertical stabilizer as it has right there. Uh, you need to make sure that that conflict is resolved and you have the latest version of the Space Audi shuttle. Uh, so you can put whatever variant of the RS-25s you have onto the shuttle and uh, depending on their nodes they might stick out so you might have to tuck them in but the angle should end up correct uh, so they are tilted up the way the shuttle's engines are and that's because the node has been tilted that way and then the external tank has variants uh, we are just gonna leave it at this variant for now and yeah so there's different textures and it should have different masses for the external tank I didn't double check that uh, again this is is still the older version I've got here and when we launch I'll have the newer version. So first you have the booster mounts, the decouplers, and then they have a node that attaches to a node inside the SRBs. So if you have the wrong version of the SRBs you won't have that node. Make sure you're using the one that comes with the mod. And then those cones, and you might want to put extra separatrons. There are separatrons at the bottom. Uh, even with them they're not enough to separate the boosters cleanly, so you might have to be creative with separatrons. Anyway, here we go. This is the shuttle launch script that I've used for the shuttle for a long time now, and it handles it fairly well. Uh, there was one minor adjustment to the roll because it kept twitching the engines a little bit, but that's about it. And the launch went fine. And here's separation. Separation did not go fine. Uh, it's still a little bit weird. Uh, I think I put the nose cones probably a little bit wrong, so I'll have to adjust that. They probably shouldn't be placed in symmetry or anything and tilted a little bit better. But there we go. We are rolled over and making orbit here. And there it cuts it. And the periapsis leaves the external tank suborbital. And then we do the OMS burn. Don't forget the AJ-10 190s for the OMS engines. Uh, they should be tilted up a little bit through the center of mass of the shuttle. Our launch was to the International Space Station inclination, 51.6 degrees, and roughly the orbit of the ISS on the apoapsis and periapsis, very roughly, at just the basic level. And I separated out a payload that would be the maximum payload for the shuttle at this inclination, about 15 tons. And then I came back down to a standby orbit of one and a half hours, which is what my re-entry script normally handles. It can handle different things, but not too much different. I still have to work on making sure it can come back from any orbit, but first I wanted to make sure that the re-entry script could do its basic work uh, in 1.12.5. It was able to do it in 1.12.3, but apparently there have been changes, as was evidenced by this test. First, we had to adjust the center of mass so that it could actually hold the pitches that the re-entry script needs it to hold, uh, though it, again, still consumes too much RCS propellant in order to do that. And then making sure that, given the aerodynamic changes, it can now adjust for those. And here we have some overheating, speaking of the aerodynamics, but the shuttle normally has overheating. However, with the accidents I've had with the Maya spacecraft in my European Space Agency series in RP-1, uh, I saw that with a little bit of trepidation, but we do have to bring the shuttle down in a particular way in order to make sure it survives, otherwise it will blow up. So, uh, yeah. Anyway, we are falling short here, as I said. Uh, this is not quite right. The script needs to be tuned a little bit, uh, but of course there's Florida. We're not completely off and I did quick save in orbit. So I loaded that up, made the adjustments and entered those in. Uh, one thing that I had to adjust previously except for the center of mass was that it needed to, it seemed to need to pitch down a little bit sooner than it used to because it started getting a little bit wobbly and a little bit stally earlier than before and so I've adjusted that as well but more testing will be needed you can see intense overheating here <laughs> uh, yeah it was quite worrisome the script is told to do s turns if it is too far away from the KSC though I've made these restrained so that 
it doesn't go out of whack and use too much RCS fuel, especially since we aren't perfectly balanced right now. If it's perfectly balanced, it shouldn't use too much and it can do pretty extreme maneuvers. But we are looking much better than last time. However, when it tries to reverse the S-turn here, I think it's what it's trying to do. Uh, I'm not entirely sure, but uh, it seems to want to be trying to go the other way here. And it doesn't do a particularly good job. And I'm not entirely sure why it wobbles like this. And that was worrisome. This sort of deviation from the norm is going to get rather interesting, and it's going to be interesting to see KOS try and hold this, despite whatever the heck is going on with the shuttle right now. You can see it's maxing, maxing out roll, yaw, and sometimes pitch, which is not good. But the previous time when we did the re-entry, it didn't do this, but that was because it wasn't going long, it was falling short, and so it wasn't trying to do S-turns. And you can see it's moved over to the opposite side of the prograde vector, and the target roll has gone opposite, but it went opposite at, uh, a while after it started getting sort of wobbly. So I don't know what the cause is, whether it was trying to go over to the other side on the S-turn, or whether that was after it started to get wobbly. It seemed like it was after it started to get wobbly that the target roll reversed to the positive. But this is an interesting orientation for it to be in. Uh, it's using a maximum amount of yaw here. I have to say the rudder, whatever the maximum amount of yaw is, the rudder sure see, doesn't seem to be doing a whole lot. I wonder if something has turned off the use of aerodynamic surfaces at high altitude or... Hopefully it's using that rudder properly. It's certainly trying to use the RCS to hold the yaw here. But, yeah, well, that's that's a problem. We're cool enough that that's not a heating problem. But yeah, it was very interesting to see it hold it, despite all these issues. And ultimately it does manage to recover this, so that I can take control. As you can see, it's now balancing out and pitching down. So that's one reason why I said we need to pitch down earlier than before, but I had already made that adjustment and it seemed even wobbly where it's not supposed to be. Anyway, accuracy-wise, all of those turns managed to get us on target for landing at Cape Canaveral, and I get control at 15 kilometers is what the script is set to hand it to me at. It activates SAS once it's done, and then I turn on atmospheric autopilot in order to control it. And we are below Mach 2 at that point. The shuttle handled more or less as I expected aerodynamically, but I did have a problem with the drag chute in the tail. It kept popping out automatically, first of all. It was automatically deploying at a certain altitude, and unfortunately that altitude was regular parachute altitudes, not drag chute parachute altitudes. And that was annoying. I forgot to try and reconfigure it with real shoot in the VAB, but you'll probably have to do that. So at a certain point you'll see that actually the parachute has already deployed in the icons in the staging. I cut out the part where it deployed and I hastily cut it. Uh, yeah, it deployed at 5,000 meters, I think it did. And I just cut the chute and got rid of it because otherwise it actually slows us down too much here. Though, I mean, in a way I could have used it a little bit because the split brakes on the rudder don't work. I mean, you, you'll see the animation if you apply brakes that the rudder splits, but it doesn't actually do any slowing down. Uh, now, that other version that Space Audi recommended on the GitHub uh, that I showed, you know, with the custom aerodynamic model and the different version of FAR, says it has the split rudder working as brakes. So, yeah, that that one will have that functionality. This one does not. So you'll have to keep that in mind. And so that's why I was doing those turns ahead of the runway to slow down, but I didn't slow down enough because we didn't have enough time. And so I'm coming in a little bit fast here. 
and ideally you want to touch down at like 90 meters per second. We are, I, I'm trying to hover over the runway to bleed off speed here. And down. And see, the split rudder works that way, but not in order to slow us down. I'm using the brakes very hard, and that's why I skid off to one side. Anyway, so that's installing and testing the shuttle in KSP 1.12.5. With that, I'll say thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please do press like. If you have any comments or suggestions, please leave them in the comment section below. And I'll see you next time.